Assembly definitions. That doesn't sound like the most exciting topic to have a video on, but they do solve project organizational challenges and when used properly, can reduce the amount of time it takes after you make a script change to the time you can actually use the Unity editor again. Most developers who've done a C-sharp project before have created multiple different .NET projects within a single solution. ASM Devs gives us the same flexibility where we can say this piece of code or this set of scripts should go into this assembly or this project. ASM Def or Assembly Definitions allow us to chunk up our code into bite-sized pieces, which allows you to know when we should recompile this piece of code versus that piece of code. Hey, Chris here from Mom Academy, here to help you. Who, me? Yes, you. Make your game dev dreams become a reality by helping you have improved project organization. Now, by default, if you've never heard of these things before, you already have one effective assembly definition that puts all of your code into the assembly C sharp DLL. For small projects, that's no problem because you don't have much code in the first place, so it compiles pretty quickly. But as we start scaling up our projects, maybe working with a larger team or just making a more complex game, or maybe even making an asset store package, it becomes really useful to be able to say, this chunk of code goes together, this chunk of code goes together, and we can then have a DLL file for that particular piece of code and a DLL for this particular piece of code. And in most cases, it probably makes sense as you're splitting up namespaces to assign assembly definitions to that namespace. And if you don't know what a namespace is, you've already been using them at the top of your script. You'll always have using Unity Engine whenever you're making a mono behavior. And that Unity Engine is a namespace that has the mono behavior class and it has sub namespaces like UnityEngine.ui that has all the UI components. And if this is just a totally foreign concept to you and you don't really know what I'm talking about, there's gonna be a link in the description and a card on the screen to a video where I talk more about namespaces in depth. We're gonna use the Gun Scriptable Object Series I've been doing a lot of work on lately as an example, just because it's a relatively complex piece of code that we've put together so far. In there, we've got scripts that are under Assets, Scripts, Guns. That's where the primary bulk of the code is there, but we also have Editors and Demo Folder in there as well. So I've created three assembly definition files here. One, LOM Academy Guns, that has all of the gun scripts. And if we didn't define the other two, LOM Academy Guns Editor and LOM Academy Guns Demo, then all of this code would wrap up to the LOM Academy Guns assembly definition because it looks at all the subfolders for which scripts should be considered. It's not really what we want because then we're putting editor code into that assembly. And also demo code that probably if you're gonna import this into your own project, you don't really care about using and you'd re-implement anyway. So to prevent that from happening, all we have to do is go into each of those folders, create a new assembly definition file and say that they depend on the main Mom Academy guns assembly definition. If you wanna create these yourself, you just right click in the folder you wanna create it in, create assembly definition. Once you do that, you'll see a bunch of options are available. In 99% of cases, if you're just starting out using these, you're gonna to want it to be auto-referenced. If you turn that off, the problem you run into is you have to manually assign this as a dependency for every other package that needs to use it, which is fine. However, the main assembly C sharp assembly that you get, you can't manually assign dependencies. It takes only auto-referenced other assembly definitions. So in most cases, you probably want this to be auto-referenced and that's the default selection for you. You'll also see that you have the ability to define the default namespace for something in this assembly definition, which is awesome because then once you say create new c -sharp script, it's going to automatically assign it to the right namespace for you. Another option available here is you can define constraints to say when this should be compiled and when it shouldn't. For example, if you're working on a mobile game, you might have all your Android specific stuff in one assembly definition and say Unity Android has to be defined for this to compile. And all the iOS stuff you put in one that says Unity iOS has to be defined. Then whenever you're building Android, we ignore the iOS stuff and vice versa. You can also define the dependencies. So in this case, I'm using TextMesh Pro, so I have to define TextMesh Pro as a dependency of LOM Academy Guns. It's important to note here that if you assign dependencies in a circular nature, so if, for example, I put LOM Academy Guns Demo has a dependency on LOM Academy Guns, and in the Guns one, I had a dependency on LOM Academy Guns Demo, I'd get an error because I have a circular dependency. They both depend on each other. That's not allowed because then we don't know which one to compile first, basically. In most cases, that's all you have to do. Create the assembly definition, set up whatever defined constraints you want, add the dependencies, optionally add the default namespace, and that's it. There's some other features that are supported here. Since we're kind of doing an introductory video, I don't want to get too much in depth on those, but you can do things like choosing a specific target platform for that assembly, restrict which specific versions of those dependencies can be allowed to be used, and you can create assembly definition references if you want to define I know, all your Android stuff over here, but you have multiple different folders scattered out that you want all brought together. 
you can define assembly definition references to bring it all into that one assembly definition without them having to be in the same folder or subfolders. I call these more advanced features and I've got a link in the documentation to how these work if you do want to read more about that. If you're developing a package for the asset store, it's really important to have an assembly definition for all of your scripts there. Otherwise, you can introduce script name conflicts so somebody will import your package and then you have a gun to find, they have a gun to find, and it fails to compile and then you get a bad review. Also doing that, as I was saying earlier, reduces the impact of compilation times on whoever's going to use your package because your stuff should stay static and they won't have to recompile it every time they make a change. All modern versions of Unity do support this, so there's not really a reason not to do that if you're publishing on the asset store. For your own project, it's kind of up to you. This is considered a best practice that really makes it so you can compile stuff faster, you have separation of concerns between this module, that module, whatever, but it's really not required. You can have everything go into the default assembly C sharp and everything will still work. And if you're doing a really small kind of prototype project, maybe it doesn't make sense to waste the time doing this. And if you got value out of this video, go ahead and like and subscribe to help the channel grow, reach more people, and add value to more people. And if you want to show your support monetarily, you can click super thanks right here on YouTube, click join, or go to patreon.com slash Academy and you can get your name up here on the screen, get a shout out at the awesome theater and some other cool perks too. Speaking of those awesome supporters, there's Gerald Anderson, Autumn K, Matt Parkin, Ivan, Rulin, and Ify Obelis. And at the tremendous tier, there's Bruno Bozic. And at the phenomenal tier, there's Andrew Bowen. Thank you all for your support. I am so incredibly grateful.